Hello. Today I'm writing an expert advisor based on a comment that I received recently, and the comment was to combine RSI overbought oversold levels with a moving average cross. So I'll explain the strategy in a moment. This video is for MetaTrader 5. I have a separate video on the same topic for MetaTrader 4, and I'll leave a link in the description and a card on screen if I can remember pointing you to the MetaTrader 4 video. The expert advisor that I'm going to write will be based on my standard default moving average cross expert advisor, uh, which I use many times as the basis for these kind of simple experts. I will be making some small changes to the MA cross expert advisor that are different to earlier versions I've had. Uh, if you want to see the earlier versions, I'll leave a link in the video where you can find the first version of that. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to be describing it in total here. And if you've already seen the earlier video, then I will leave chapter marks so that you can skip over that if you want to. The code is very similar for MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5. So at times I will be simply cutting and pasting in the video from one to the other. And so you may see some continuity errors where I do that. Uh, just ignore any code around the function where I'm making the discussion and just concentrate on the code that I'm talking about and that way it will only be relevant to the MetaTrader 4 or 5 video. But as I said, I have copied some parts of the video from the MetaTrader 4 to the 5 or from the 5 to the 4. So let me first go out and describe the strategy to you, and then I'll move on and show the moving average cross, which is the basis for the strategy that I'm writing, and then we'll make the updates to that to create the RSI MA cross combined strategy. All right, I have the MetaTrader charts open here. I've got the EURUSD. I'll just change that to a 15 minute chart. The strategy uses an RSI, a 10 period RSI, with levels at 80 for overbought and 15 for oversold. It then uses a five period exponential moving average, which I've colored here in yellow, and a 10 period moving average colored in blue. The strategy itself says to wait for the RSI to be overbought, which is here above 80. And if there is a downward cross of the moving average, which means the fast moving average becomes below the slow moving average or the five period becomes below the 10, then sell. And if the RSI as in here is oversold, then buy if the moving average crosses above. So if the five period becomes above the 10 period. When I built this and ran some tests over a two year period, I got no trades at all. So I'm actually going to be testing this with the RSI levels set at 50 and 50. Uh, I know it's not exactly what the strategy says, but in order to show it in the demonstration, that's what I'll be doing. But I will be writing the code with the default values of 80 and 15 for the RSI overbought and oversold. The strategy didn't specify any exit criteria. So I've chosen as an exit criteria and Let's just get rid of the RSI for the moment. So if we just look at the moving average cross, for example, there's a cross here. I am setting the stop loss at the recent swing low, which would be there. Uh, and then the take profit is a one to one ratio of that stop loss to the market entry point uh, and the market entry point, because I'm waiting for the cross, I would be entering at this point at the top of that bar. So I would have a stop loss down to here and a one-to-one -one take profit. To find the stop loss, I'm using a standard function, which we'll see in a moment when I go to the standard functions. Um, and then for a sell signal, we find a sell, here's a good one, where the fast moving average crossed below the slow. Uh, I would have picked that up at this point at the close of that bar. So the stop loss there would have been at this swing high. I know there's a, a break there, but that's further back than I'm looking. So I would have set my stop loss there and a one to one take profit. Uh, fairly simple, but there was no exit criteria specified with the request. Although, as I've said, the actual expert or the criteria for this didn't make any trades over a two year period you can still take this code and adapt it with values of your own and use it as an example of combining these two indicator sets. So now let's go into the moving average cross and just show that as the default basis 
And once I've done that, I'll then move on to the RSI moving average cross and show how I changed the default moving average cross expert into the RSI moving average expert. Right now I have the MetaTrader 5 editor, moving average cross. This is the standard moving average cross expert that I use as the basis. Uh, it just starts with comments and standard defines the app name, app magic number, which I typically set to year, year, year when I'm just doing these tutorials. And then the copyright link version number and description. So it's just moving average cross. And now there are inputs and these inputs for the moving average, for the fast moving average, I have some standard inputs that I have for that. And I generally have a naming convention like this, INP fast MA period. So this is a 20 period moving average method. Default is for EMA and the applied price is to apply the closing price. Now this block for the fast MA you'll see is almost the same as for the slow MA. There are just some differences in the values and in the names of the variables. I use these blocks of code, fast MA and slow MA and a number of others so often that I actually already have them stored in a separate file of code snippets and I just copy them into my new applications as I write them and then just change these values as I need them. So that's just a potential programming tip for you if you are writing a lot of expert advisors or indicators, you might find there are certain blocks of code that you reuse and in this case I could have created these as include files, but quite often I will be changing the names here. And because I am changing the values, it's just easier to copy these into my code. Uh, my default stop loss take profit for this particular expert is a fixed number of pips. So stop loss pips at 50 and profit pips at 50. As I say, this is just for demonstration and as a basis starting expert advisor. Uh, and then the standard inputs, I default to 0.01 for these tutorials in an order size. And there's the app magic and the app name from above in the magic number and the trade comment. In MetaTrader 5, I'm going to be using some classes to help with placing trades. Uh, so typically I use this hash include left bracket trade slash trade dot MQH. That file is supplied with MetaTrader 5. And that gives me access to two classes, the C trade and the C position info class. And I just declare them once off at the beginning of the code. Type C trade, and I'm calling the variable for that trade, and type C position info, I'm calling that position info. The handles and buffers, I need two handles for the fast and slow moving average. And I need buffers then to hold the values that I'm going to be retrieving from those fast and slow moving averages. And they're just declared as dynamic arrays of doubles. And I'm also setting up this constant buffer values required equals three because I'm going to be retrieving these in a standard function. And I'm going to be using that value, that three, to tell me how many bars I want back. So I'm going to be getting back the values from bars zero, one, and two, so three. And then global variables, stop loss and take profit. These are simply where I'm going to be storing double values for the inputs of the stop loss pips and the take profit pips. On init for MetaTrader 5, Here's where I convert that stop loss and take profit using these functions pips to double. Now that function is defined later and we'll get to that later in the code, uh, but I'm passing in the stop loss pips and the take profit pips there. I call the is new bar function once because I, if I start the expert in the middle of a bar, I don't want the first pass through to detect a new bar. So by calling that once, I simply say I've already detected the current bar and it won't fire a, or it won't return a true value again until the next time a bar opens. I need to set that expert magic number. It's the INP magic that's in the inputs on the trade object. So trade.set expert magic number, one time call. And then I set up the two handles to the moving averages, handle fast MA and slow MA. Both are calling the IMA function, symbol period, fast MA period, zero for shift, fast MA method and fast MA applied price. And then slow is just the same, but using the slow inputs. Now I like to have the buffers in reverse. So I like to have buffer element number zero matching bar number zero on the chart. So I also make this one time call array set as series buffer fast MA true and buffer slow MA true. And then I have a test if the handle fast MA is invalid or the handle slow MA is an invalid handle then I had an error somewhere in these calls. I'll print an error message and return in it failed. 
otherwise I just return init succeeded. In the onDinit function from MT5, I need to release those two variables, or I need to release the two handles. So indicator release, handle fast, handle slow, and now into onTick. I declare three working variables, the new bar, which I get from the isNewBar function, condition open by, condition open sell, which I just default to false. If this is not a new bar, then return because this particular expert only trades on a new bar, so there's nothing for me to do if I don't have a new bar. These functions are defined later. This is a custom function. There's fill buffers, and this is where I pass in that buffer values required, and it will fill each of the fast and slow buffers with that number of values. And if that fails, then I'll simply return. The condition open by is then just cross up or cross down of the buffer fast, buffer slow for bar number one. So this cross up and cross down, these are also custom functions, and they simply tell me that the value for buffer fast MA has crossed above the value for the slow MA at bar number one. And cross down tells me that fast has crossed below slow. So if I have an open buy condition, then I call this trade open SLTP gap. Now, this is a descriptive type name. You may have seen in the past, I just use something like trade open, but what I normally do is have a single library of functions, which I include into these files. And because I open trades in many different ways, and I can't always differentiate based on just the values in the argument list here, I have to use something descriptive in the names. Later, once I've written the code, I will then copy these functions back into the expert for the tutorial so that you don't have to jump from here to the include file. Uh, but that's why this descriptive name is here. And I used to convert these back to just trade open, but I've decided to just leave them as they are now. So trade open SLTP gap, the order type, order size, trade comment, stop loss gap or stop loss value and take profit value. And then return. And if I get to this point, if it's condition open sell, it's the same call, but here I'm replacing order type buy with order type sell. Now going down to the custom functions, uh, let's start with points to double. So points to double takes a value of number of points and simply multiplies that number of points by the size of a point. This point is an inbuilt function and gives me the decimal size of a single point for the current symbol. So points multiplied by point gives me the result for points to double as a double. When I'm calling pips to double to convert that stop loss and take profit pips into a double value, I'm passing in the number of pips and I'm returning points to double of the value pips to points. Pips to points is this function, it takes the number of pips and returns the number of pips multiplied by. Now, if the current chart symbol digits function is three or digits is five. So if the number of digits for the quoted symbol is three or five, then I'm going to multiply this number of pips by 10. And if it's not three or five, then I'll multiply it by one. And that simply tells me how many pips I have. So pip, sorry, and that simply tells me how many points I have. So pips to points will convert the number of pips into points and then points to double will convert that value to a double. Here is the isNewBar function. It has this static date time previous time equals zero. Now, if you're not familiar with it, static variables receive this default value the first time the function's called, and after that, they retain the value they had from the previous call to the function. So I'm initializing this to zero, and that's why I make that single call from the onInit function to simply flush this out, and you'll see as the rest of the code goes. Uh, then I have a date time of current time, and that is equal to I time for the symbol period bar number zero. So that gives me the start time for the current bar. And then a comparison. If the previous time is not the same as the start time for the current bar, then I must have a new bar. I set the previous time to that current bar start time and return true. If I get to this point, then the previous time is the same as the current time. And so I can just return false. So that's the isNewBar function. Now the cross up and cross down functions. They take the same arguments. There's 
an array, which is the fast moving average in this case, and a second array, the slow moving average, and an index, which is the bar number that I want to compare. There is an optional argument here, index two, which is defaulted to minus one, and I haven't used it, so I'm getting the default. And that is in case I want to compare the value with this index with something other than the previous bar. So I can set that to a bar number and it will compare the value for this bar with the value for that bar. If index two has come in at the default minus one, so I have this statement, if index two is less than zero, then I simply set index two equal to index one plus one. So the default is to compare to the previous bar. And then across is equal to array one, index one is greater than array two, index one, and not array one, index two is greater than array two, index two. And then I simply return cross. Now the cross down is the same, the same test here for index two, but I've just reversed the greater than and less than signs in this cross line. And then I just return cross. And here are the custom functions that are specific to MT5. The fill buffers function takes in that values required and simply calls copy buffer using the handle to the indicator. Buffer number zero, because I only have one buffer on moving averages and that is number zero. Beginning at bar number zero for the number of values required and putting those values into the buffer fast MA. This copy buffer returns the number of values returned. So if that is less than the values required, then I don't have enough information and I simply print an error message and return false. The same then for the slow MA, but here I'm using the handle to the slow MA and the buffer for slow MA. And I return true at this point because I've managed to copy all of those values. The trade open SLTP gap function, uh, the type, volume, trade comment, stop loss defaults to zero and take profit defaults to zero. So some working variables here, the price that's going to be the opening price for the trade, close price will be the closing price for the trade. Uh, that's the closing price as at now. So it's really just accounting for the spread at the moment. SL is the stop loss price, TP is the take profit price, and then stops level. I get this with the symbol trade stops level value of symbol info integer, which comes back as a long. So I cast that to an int and then call the points to double function to convert to points. This is the minimum distance that a stop loss or take profit can be away from the current trade price. And I use that because in these next statements, if stop loss is greater than zero, which means that I'm setting a stop loss, so zero is a valid value, and that stop loss is less than the stops level, then return because that would result in me trying to place a stop loss too close to the current price and I just can't do it. Same thing here with take profit. If take profit is less than stops level, then return. So now, if type is a type buy, the open price is the ask price, symbol ask from symbol info double, and the close price is the symbol bid price. If stop loss is greater than zero, then the stop loss price is equal to price minus stop loss. Actually, that should be close price. Should be the same there. So the stop loss value is the close price minus the stop loss and the take profit value or the take profit price is price plus the take profit value. And both of those are if stop loss or take profit is greater than zero. Otherwise they'll retain the default values of zero here which are valid, meaning you have no stop loss and no take profit. I use normalized double on the price, stop loss and take profit, just to make sure that they're all valid for the number of digits for this current symbol. And then I call using that trade object again, trade.position open, the symbol, type, the volume, price, stop loss price, take profit price, and the trade comment. And if that fails, so I've got a not here, then I just print the failure message. And that's the end of the MetaTrader 5 specific functions and the end of the MA cross functions. So now I'll go to the RSI MA cross custom. I'll start out by simply copying all of this MA cross code. And then I'll show you how I modify that to add in the RSI and change the trading rules. All right, so I've created the RSI MA cross custom MQ5. 
and I've simply copied the code from the MA Cross MQ5 into here and just made a change to the heading and I've added in these rules for the strategy. The rules are fairly simple. Buy when the RSI is oversold, which is less than 15, and the EMA5 crosses above the EMA10 and so on for the sell where the RSI overbought is greater than 80. And here are some rules that I added because the strategy that I received didn't say anything about an exit routine. So I'm putting a stop loss at the nearest swing low for a buy and the nearest swing high for a sell. And that swing low and high I'm identifying with a five period fractal. So it's going to be the highest high or the lowest low for five bars. Uh, and the take profit is just going to be a one to one ratio to the stop loss. Other than that, these statements are the same as they were for the moving average. And in the MetaTrader 5 video here, you may see some continuity as I paste in sections from the MT4 video where it's just the same. So I still need the fast and the slow MA inputs, but I'm changing these default values to five and 10 as according to the strategy. Uh, and they're both still EMA and closing price. Now I need to add in the RSI values. Now something else I may have mentioned earlier is that I tend to keep these little input blocks in a separate file ready to copy and paste in here because I do them so often. So I already have the standard inputs for an RSI. So I'll just paste those in here. So it's just got the RSI period, the applied price, overbought and oversold levels. I've already filled in the defaults there, 80 and 15 for the overbought and oversold, and the period is 10. The stop loss and take profit, I'm replacing the stop loss and take profit pips with the swing high and swing low number of bars, and then with the take profit ratio. So I'll just delete these two. So I have the swing period that's just defaulting to a five, that's five bars highest and lowest. And the take profit ratio is one to one. No change for the basic inputs. Now in MetaTrader 5, I've added this include trade slash trade.mqh that was also there in the MA cross and I have no need to change that for this version. I do need to add a handle for the RSI and a buffer for the RSI. I'm still leaving buffer values required at three and I'm going to apply that to the RSI as well, even though I'm not going to be loading in or I don't need three values, but I'll explain that later. I don't need these global values for stop loss and take profit. And I don't need these two conversions into stop loss and take profit because I'm not using fixed point values for stop loss and take profit. I'm now using the swing high low and the one to one ratio. I'll just add a handle RSI here. And of course I want to do the same array set as series. I'm just going to copy this line, change that. And then I also need to add a check in here for the handle RSI. That should be everything for on init. In on D init, I need to release the RSI handle. Copy that. In on tick, all this new bar and condition open buy and sell don't change. If not new bar, that doesn't change. Fill buffers doesn't change. At least the call here doesn't change, but uh, inside that function, we'll go to that. I'll also be loading in the RSI values. The condition open by, I still need the cross up, but I now need a second condition for the RSI. So I'm still looking for a cross up of the fast over the slow, but I'm now looking at buffer RSI number, or buffer RSI bar one being less than the input RSI oversold level. And then for the open cell, I need to do the same thing here. I have the cross down and the cell is the same here. I've still got the cross down function and now buffer RSI one is greater than the overbought level. I'm not trading with a stop loss uh, number of points and a take profit points now. So I need to actually calculate the stop loss price at each call. So first I just have a stop loss price variable here because I'm going to be setting that inside 
either the buy or the sell. And now to get that stop loss price, I'm calling another custom function, swing low, and that takes a starting bar number, bar number zero, the swing period from the inputs. That tells me how many bars I'm looking either side to find that swing low. The stop loss price, so that is going to be passed by reference, so it will come back with the actual price for the stop loss. And the swing low does return a bar number, I'm just not using it. And then, of course, I'm calling a different function, trade open stop loss price take profit ratio. As I said, I tend to have all of these functions in a library and I just call them, so I need to use different names to keep them apart. Uh, but when I run these tutorials, I copy those functions in. And that uh, take profit ratio just takes the type, the order size, the trade comet, and then the stop loss price and the take profit ratio. Sell is the same. But in this case, I'm calling a swing high. That's going to return the high price with the same parameters. And then the take, then the trade open stop loss price take profit ratio, but this order type cell and all the rest of the arguments are the same. Most of these functions don't change. In fact, none of these functions change, but the swing high and swing low are new functions. These are also functions that I keep in a library. So I'm just going to paste them in and then describe them. So swing high takes a start bar number, the number of look back bars, and by reference, the value of that bar. And it returns an integer, which is the bar number. So I begin by saying high bar equals start. That's just an initialization. And then I use a do loop. So a do loop will execute once at least before it reaches the while condition. And the first statement here is to say that start equals high bar. Now, on the first loop through this, they're going to be the same already, but that's just a standard initialization. And then I find high bar using the I highest function, symbol, period, mode high for the number of lookback bars, beginning with the start bar. So that finds the highest bar in that period. Now, I then say while high bar is not equal to start. So if this high bar function or if the high bar statement found another bar which is actually higher than the start bar, then high bar is not equal to start. And we loop back again and just move the start up and search again until I find that they're the same. And then I simply set value equals the I high for that symbol period and the high bar. And I return high bar, as I said, that's the number of the bar and value is this coming back by reference. Swing low is exactly the same, but I use low bar. I search for I lowest on the mode low and the I low function. Now fill buffers is the same for the fast and the slow MA. I just need to add the same lines for the RSI. Now I do have a complete replacement of this trade open because it's a completely different function, but a lot of the code is the same. So what I'll do is modify this code rather than just dump in a whole new piece of code to explain. First I'll replace these. So trade open stop loss price take profit ratio, the order type, volume, comment, stop loss price, which defaults to zero, and the take profit ratio, which also defaults to zero. And then I have here, if the stop loss price is less than zero return, because a stop loss price of less than zero makes no sense, but equal to zero is valid because that means I'm not setting a stop loss. I'm still declaring a price, a close price, and a stop loss. This is actually the stop loss price that I'm going to be using. But instead of defaulting that to zero, I'm going to default it to the stop loss price that was passed in. I still have a take profit and I still have stops level from the symbol trade stops level. Now, because I'm not receiving stop loss and take profit as a distance at this point, I can't simply do this check and exit. So I just take those lines out. I don't need to calculate a stop loss price and I'm going to calculate the take profit price further down. But I do need in here to make that check to see that the stop loss isn't too close to the price. So in this case, if stop loss price is greater than zero, meaning I do want to set a stop loss, and the stop loss price is greater than the difference between close price and stops level. 
close price minus stops level is going to give me the closest price to the current prices where I can actually place a stop loss. So if I'm too close to that, I just return. And just copy that line and make some changes. Here again, if stop loss price is greater than zero and stop loss price is less than close price, that would be plus stop level. So just reversing those for the sell. And now take profit. I took it out of these lines because I can calculate it just once. So if the take profit ratio is greater than zero, then I set the take profit to price plus price minus stop loss. And that will work whether this is a buy or a sell simply because the sign on this will change. Uh, I've already initialized take profit to zero. So if take profit ratio is equal to zero, then it will already be a zero take profit. Then just as before, price equals normalize double, stop loss, take profit. And I then just call the trade dot position open as the same as the simple moving average cross. And that is everything for the MetaTrader 5 version of the RSI MA cross custom. I'll just compile that. No problem. Now we'll go into the demonstration and I'm demonstrating this on MetaTrader 5. So I have MetaTrader 5 here. I have already loaded the expert into the strategy tester. And as I mentioned sometime earlier, when I ran this initially using the default overbought and oversold according to the strategy over a two year period, I got no trades. So just for this demonstration, I've changed those both to 50. So if it's overbought at 50 or oversold at 50, then as soon as we get across, we will trade on that. I'm just going to run this through and just step it to the first couple of trades so that you can see them. There's no point in showing the result for this, especially since I've changed these parameters so drastically. But I just want to show that it will set those trades with the take profit and stop loss as expected. So here we can see it's placed a buy trade. And if we move to the left, I can see the take profit at 199 and the stop loss at minus 199. So I'd set those equally. And I can see that the stop loss is based on a low point for this bar. Now it might look like it should have been here, but so the five bars that I'm looking at include the bar where it has found that low and one, two, three, four, five bars. It is still the lowest bar up to here. So I could have increased that five bars, made it 10 maybe if you want to be a little bit more accurate but that's where it's set the low point for this swing low. So that's the stop loss and then it will move. And of course the take profit is a ratio one to one from that. I'll let it run now until I get to a sell trade just to see what happens there. Just shrink that a little to get the numbers away. So I now have a sell trade and I can see it has a stop loss at minus 181. That is at this swing high and the take profit at 181 is a one to one ratio from that. So I'm not going to, as I said, show you a complete run of this because I'm just trying to show how it places the trades and there's no point in showing a profit result from this given that I've changed the input parameters so much. But that is my explanation of showing, adding an additional indicator in there, matching them up and the code that you need to go through to maybe convert that standard moving average cross into something else. I mentioned earlier, there will be a link to earlier videos that also describe the moving average cross, but I have changed it a little with this version. The moving average cross code and the code for the RSI moving average cross will be available for download. If you follow the link in the description to our website, you'll find a link then to download the code for that. And that will be for both MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5, two different downloads. So I hope this has been useful to you. If it has, then click that like button. And if you want to see more of our videos, click subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications when we release new videos. Until next time, thank you for watching.